Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you Rainy Days Get Well Cards. This is for the Pretty Pink Posh blog hop and birthday celebration. So I want to show you the blog hop in the links down below. You can get to all of it from my blog. Here is the stamp set that I'm going to be using, Rainy Days. It's got umbrellas, clouds, little raindrops, lots of little cute things, and great sentiments to make Get Well Cards. Sorry you're under the weather is what I'm going to use. I've stamped it with archival jet black ink on watercolor paper because I want to use my clean color pens. I don't love these more than any other pens, but there are certain things these do that others won't. And I try to find those techniques to bring them to you. And clouds and rain and these kind of mushy sort of weathery things are really great with these pens. And you'll see why. I've taken the cloud and kind of in my mind pictured each one of those poofies as a circle and just made a little half circle at the bottom of each one to add a shadow and then I'm filling it in with a light gray and then I'm going to take my silver brush with just clean water on it and I'll rinse it in between if I start picking up too much of the gray marker and just so I'm, I'm putting clean water down I don't want to drag that gray around too much and get the cloud too gray and then spreading that highlight area so that it gets really soft and then I'll go in and work on the shadows I'm going to just add water underneath so that those shadows aren't really harsh because it is a cloud clouds are poofy not not really hard edged and i'm just going to spread that water if you add too much water it'll all turn into one shade of gray so you kind of need to be careful about exactly how much you put down you can always dab some off with a paper towel if you start getting too much water and it starts really swimming around in there now you'll notice that i left a little white around the bottom or it's actually a little bit of gray it looks white because the colors around it but that allows for this bottom area to have some separation between it and the cloud because I wanted a column of really dark ominous rain because I know when I'm sick that's what I feel like like there's just a giant cloud over my head raining on my parade and that's what I was trying to create so I started with my dark gray I pulled some color down with that medium blue gray and then I'm going over top of it again with the dark gray because I want some real streakiness and I want the depth of that really dark gray color right under the cloud now I'm going to go in with a really light gray, the same light gray I used above, and I'm just going to drag the color down and just pull it by coloring right over top of the color that's already there and just make streakies. This is one of those things where you don't have to worry about your blending be all, being all perfect because of what we're going to do in just a few minutes, but you can pull the color down and, and just kind of mush it around. I decided I also wanted to put a puddle at the bottom, so I started in with my light color. And I wanted to add a little bit of shadow to it, but not a ton. I didn't want it to be super dark. So I just picked up a little bit of color from the dark area above so that I could get a little tiny shade darker for a shadow. Just a little bit, put a few drops around on the ground just so there's a little bit of water hitting the ground and it's uh, not really dark though. I didn't want it to be super heavy. And then I dried it really well with my Wagner heat gun. Now you can let it air dry but you're gonna let it dry really, really well if you do, because this next step won't work if it's not fully dry. You're gonna paint on water drops with your brush. I'm using a number six brush. You can certainly use something smaller, really depends on the scale of what you're creating, but you can either do straight streaks or you can do ones with like a little bob at the bottom. So they're more drop shaped, a little fatter at the bottom, and then they look a little bit more like water drops. And if your blending is not perfect, this works great to be able to create a look of water drops without having to worry about the perfect blending behind it because it's all going to mush into this beautiful cloud in the long run anyway. And you dab it off with a paper towel and it works out just perfect. And I stamped the little sad face from the stamp set on top of it as well. And this is a three and a half by five inch card because I found a bunch of small envelopes in my stash. I thought those would be perfect for just a little get well message. And it's going to be nice to have a couple cards in my stash for use next time somebody gets sick. Next, we're going to make a shaker card. I have another piece that I had had colored already. It was my fail piece. It was my test run. And I trimmed it out so it'll fit inside this pretty pink posh die. Cutest little die ever. And I want to make a shaker card with these little stars. Oh my gosh, I've never seen stars so tiny. They're adorable and I love them. So I'm gonna use my fuse to do it and I've got an old stamp pocket that's fallen apart 
And I'm going to line everything up so that I can use the ruler from the fuse to line up with that dark line that I just pointed to right there. I'm going to tape this down with some washi tape, hold it in place, and get my ruler ready. The fuse has been there and, and heating up. It takes about 10 minutes to warm up. And you can see it's got little teeth on the end of this little roller thingy. So you want the roller to actually roll so that every one of those teeth hits the plastic. A lot of people wonder how fast or how slow do you go. You go fast enough or not slow, not too slow that you get the, the heat dragging along that. You have to make sure that that spins rather than drags. That seems to be the key and taking a couple practice runs on a piece of scratch really works well to get your hand used to how heavy to press and how slow to go. So I put my little stars in there and lined it up on top of my die cut and I could just draw this little line and know exactly where to put my fuse. So I've lined that up with the line on the We Are Memory Keepers little glass mat and bada boom bada bing. All of those little things are sealed in there for my shaker card. Trimmed off the edges and then I put some Be Creative tape on both sides, front and back, so I could peel off that backing and stick it on a really simple card and stamp the sentiment onto the frame itself. These frames are fabulous. I'm just telling you, I'm gonna be using it a ton because can you think of all the little tiny images that are gonna be perfect inside such a tiny, tiny Polaroid frame. There's a couple in that die set too, so there's even smaller ones. But here you can see there's an inside piece as well that's also stitched. So you're gonna get little stitched rectangles as well. Way fun, double duty on the, the die set. And I've stamped the little umbrella onto the watercolor cardstock as well now. And I'm just gonna color it with a red and a yellow. And with these clean color pens, if you wanna blend colors like this and you want that yellow to stay pure, you see it got really orangey on that side and it's gonna get fairly orangey here. There's not a whole lot of yellow left because I've really pulled that color onto my, the tip of my pen. So now I'm scribbling off on the side and in the area where I want it to remain yellow, I color the yellow first and then go over the top and start doing some blending. And if you need to and you wanna get rid of some of that red, go scribble it off again on some scratch paper and then go back to your paper because if you get some of that red on there, it's gonna contaminate that yellow. It's not gonna contaminate it permanently, you can scribble it off, but it's gonna not make it so that you have some yellow on your little umbrella. And I wanted to make sure that I had a, a nice bright color on here. I'm going to do the background similar to how we did the other one, except I'm gonna do it kind of in the reverse. There's gonna be the dark coming up from the edge of our little umbrella and going the other direction and then we'll do some polka dots while it, while the sky dries. I'll do some polka dots onto the umbrella itself with a Uniball Signo white pen. And I love giant polka dots. There's just something about them. I think uh, that would be a really nice umbrella for me to have. And then I'm gonna do some rain splatters on this. And you can even make little apostrophe shapes, comma shapes, to make it look like they're bouncing and then make others that look like they're rain coming down from the sky. And this will make a really sweet little tiny panel to put on a card. And you could make a whole bunch of these as you make other things. So make sure you think about what kind of paper you're die cutting the frames out of so you can use the insides. And I just put showers of blessings. This would be great for a lot of different reasons uh, for get wells, but also for baby showers and bridal showers and showers of blessings just to send someone some encouragement especially on a rainy day like we've been having crazy, crazy weather. Here's a few more videos if you're interested in seeing more from me. On the right are two videos that have clean color pen in them. The one on the left has more pretty pink posh. There's a subscribe button there. If you're interested in seeing more from me, hit that button so you can have it all delivered to your inbox. I'm Sandy Allnock on social media all over the place. Would love to connect with you out there. And of course, there is more on the blog, still pictures of today's cards, and a link to the blog hop. I'll see you guys later.